So welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm going to continue the R for Excel users series. And in this simple tutorial, I'm going to just be showing you the equivalent of what you can see on the screen here is opening up an Excel document and viewing the data. And I'm going to be doing that in R for both CSV files and XLSX files. So let's head over to R Studio. Once you've got RStudio open, if you don't have R or RStudio already, head over to my previous video where I show you how to download both. Here I'm going to show you two ways you can import Excel documents, both being CSV and XLSX. First, I'll show you the simple importing the data set via RStudio itself, so by using their import data set function. But I'll also show you how to do it using the code just so you can understand that a bit more. But as you'll see, the code is exactly the same that's used to pull it in. It's just RStudio does all the legwork for you. So to import your data set, you have the option here and the option under file, import data set. As I'm just importing what is there, because as you can see, it's the same. I'm just going to go with the CSV file first, which uses the library readr. So if we select from text in brackets readr, that will then take you into this view, which will allow you to preview the data. But as I mentioned earlier, you can start to see what the code is doing. And down here, you can see it's installing the library readr. If you don't already have it installed, it will install it for you. If you need an update again, it will update for you as well when you run this. And then the next part is that it's creating what is called a data set. And this is just a name that is storing the file and then gives you the function to say view what the data set is. So this can be any name you want, but as you see, we can adjust this. So first what you do is go up to browse, and then you head to the folder where you have the files. So I'm just going to go to the CSV version, click open, and then the data pulls through and you can see it's all there. Now it's already done a comma delimiter. You may find when you load in your data, depending on how the CSV is formatted, it might not pull up the comma. It might have different parts to it. So what you need to do is if you see everything's all joined together, just ensure that the correct delimiter is selected. Otherwise it won't work like so. So now this has come back, you have the means to be able to change the file name here. So, so we just don't get confused with both Excel types. I'm going to remove that and then call this one CSV. And then once you're happy with it, then we can just import. And then you have the data pull up here. So if we just click that off because it automatically viewed because we clicked view. You can just click here. If you do use the view, which is showing you down in the console here, that's what allows you to view here. But you can just click on it without having to actually type the code. Now we've imported our CSV file. Now I'm going to show you how to import an XLSX file. This uses a different library called read Excel. And again, you can just go into the import data set. If you select from Excel, this will give you the means to be able to import Excel files. So it doesn't have to just be, it can just be an XLS file. If we go up to browse, find that file, which is this one in particular, click open, and now it's pulled through. And as you can see, it's done the same, just a different bit of wording on the coding used. And obviously the library's different to the one we use for the CSV. You can see all the different data. And again, you can change the name. So if we remove that and call it X, XOXX. Now in my file, I have two data sets. So if you've got two tabs in your file, you can select which one you want. So data is the first tab in my Excel file. So it's automatically pulling that through. But if I wanted to pull through the other tab, you can click on the sheet to do that. But as you'll notice down here, it changes what the coding is. So instead of it just being before when it was just showing you the root, it's now added sheet equals and then giving you the tab name in the Excel document. So if I change this, you see it changes there, but you don't have to write the code to do it. It just does it automatically. So now we're happy with the one we've actually got here. We're just going to click import. And again, there's your data. So as I mentioned, I'm going to show you how to do it with just pure coding. And this is how the code reads. And as I went through earlier, when I was just explaining the different parts of the code, what you have is the library 
which is the program that runs the means to be able to do this. And then the next part is where you've got the root to the file that you want to bring in, but then also how you're naming it. So you could name it anything, but you want to keep it something that you can actually remember. So we are ever referring to it again in any of the code, you're always using this particular name instead of always putting in all this information here. So if you wanted to, you could just call this A. It would still run and give you the same thing. So if I show you, if you highlight this particular line here and then click run, you've got A and it's still the same data. So then if we pull it back to COVID cases, CSV, and then run that. It probably won't do it actually, because I've already got it already existing. So let's call this two and then run. There we go. So if we look at COVID cases two and A, it's the same. So you can call it wherever you want, but for this one, it made sense to keep it close to the name. So you remember what everything is called. And then as I mentioned, down here is view. So instead of you having to click on this, you can just run the code here and it will do it. So if you move over to the same with the XLSX file and you see the library is different. As I mentioned before, it uses the XL instead of the R at the end of read. So as we called it this name here and it broke on the last one, we're going to call this two and then I'm going to nick that name and then dump it into here like so with the coding down here. So you can see this says read Excel. So that's the point of the code which you need to write to be able to then pull in the root of where the file is. Because I have this saved in the documents, it knows automatically what the documents are. So pick the file from that particular folder. If you had the folder anywhere outside your documents, then you'll need to put in the full route to be able to find it. So here is where the additional tabs that you have are stated here. So if we were to run the whole of this bit of code, this will make this table automatically show up like so. So thank you for watching. And again, as always, please leave a comment. Let me know if there's anything you want me to cover in future videos. And obviously like and subscribe. Until next time.